सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्त मा विदिषा वह ओ शांति 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 Sairam everyone. So we have been studying uh, the Bajagovindam verses. Bajagovindam composed by Sri Adi Shankar Acharya. So far we have covered four verses, and um, so the order in which we are studying is the order in which Swami has uh, given his discourses during the nineteen seventy three. Summer showers. So today we are picking up the fifth verse which Swami covered in the seventh discourse, and um, so this 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 verse is one of the last verses which Adi Shankaracharya had composed in the work in the work Bhajagovinda, uh, the penultimate uh, verse, I would say. um so we will look at that pranayamam pratyaharam nitya nitya viveka vicharam japya sameta समाधि विधानम कुर्वधानम महदवधानम प्राणायामम प्रत्याहारम नित्यानित्य विवेक विचारम जाप्य समेत समाधि विधानम कुर्वधानम महदवधानम प्राणायामम प्रत्याहारम नित्यानित्य विवेक विचारम जाप्य समेत समाधि विधानम कुर्वधानम महदवधानम इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रोनाउंसिएशन द फर्स्ट लाइन इज रादर सिंपल देर आर नो aspirated consonants in the second one also there are none in the third line samadhi dhi and we dha dhanam these two are using the fourth letter in the ta varga or ta class of consonants which have to be aspirated so it should be pronounced samadhi samadhi vidhanam okay so the dha and dhi are aspirated so it requires a little more air when you pronounce them the fourth line also the same letters show up kurvava dhanam dha and mahadava dha again dhanam so um, these are the only four letters i would say aspirated consonants in this Words. Otherwise, it should be rather simple to chant. Okay. So we will um, look at the word splits. Prana yama is one word. There are though there are two words, but there are no real splits. I will when we go through the meaning, I will go through that. Prana yama is one word. Pratyaharam is also one word. for all practical purposes 
In the next line, Nitya Nitya. Nitya Nitya, yes, Nitya and Anitya. The Nitya and Anitya, where Ya and A becomes Ya. Ya plus A becomes Ya. So that's how you get Nitya Nitya. Viveka Vicharam, there are two words, but there are no real changes due to Sandhi. In the next line, which seems like just one word itself, um, there are multiple words, but there are no changes per se due to Sandhi. But I will just split the four words Japya, Sameta, Samadhi, and Vidhanam. But there are no changes due to the Sandhi. The fourth line, Kuru Avadhanam, is made of two words. Kuru and Avadhana. The Ru plus A becomes Irva. Generally, U plus A becomes Va. So, Kuru Avadhana. Okay, when Kuru and Avadhana come together. In the next word, Mahad Avadhana, there are two words which is Mahat and Avadhana. The it, when it's followed by a, the it becomes id. This is the first letter in the third varga. It becomes the third letter. It gets softened actually. To put this, okay. So mahadavadhana. So it plus a becomes id plus a, which is the. Okay, mahadavadhana. So that's a sandhi change. But when you split, it is Mahat and Avadhana. Uh, we will look at the meanings of all the word to word meanings. Pranayama. I think many, most of all of you should know or familiar with the word Pranayama. That is breath, breath practice or breath control or regulation of breath. You know, that's the way. Prana. Prana means life force itself. It's not only air, it's just life force. Ayamam. Ayamam means to hold and retain. To hold and retain is ayama. It also means a and yama. Yama stands for any form of restriction. Any form of discipline is yama. So the yama itself comes from that. Ayama means that which comes. Okay. So you take the breath and you hold it, and that practice is called ayama. So prana ayama is pranayama. So for simple purposes, I put regulation of breath as the meaning. The next line, next word is prat. Pratyaharam. Pratyaharam. Uh, pratyaharam is made of two components of words, I would say. Prati, which is a prefix, and the main word is ahar. Prati aharam is pratyaharam. So aharam is all of you know, anything which you eat is ahar. Whatever you take in, grab, that is ahara. Hara is itself is to grab. Uh, so ahara means you take it towards yourself, that's ahara, which is food. So prati ahara means prati is going opposing, opposing the ahara, you can say. So you don't take anything in, that is prati ahara. That is withdrawal from. All sensory inputs because aharam can come from mouth, nose, eyes, ears, touch. All these five sensory, the jnana indriyas, are always taking things from outside. You put a ceiling on that, a control, limit it, regulate it. So generally, it's pratyahara means withdrawal from sensory inputs. Okay, pratyahara, pratyahara. The next word is Nitya. Nitya is whatever is permanent. 
permanent is nitya. This other word is anitya, impermanent. Nitya nitya means what is permanent and what is not permanent. Viveka. Viveka is, it's actually made of V is the prefix which gets added. And the way comes from the word watch. Okay, so um, it basically means separating, discriminating between what is permanent and what is impermanent, what is nitya and what is anitya. Viveka, okay, separating. Vichara, okay, vichara means to inquire, to examine. Okay. Uh, question, you know, you can ask. So, questioning what is permanent, what is impermanent, and separating the out. What is permanent from what is impermanent, which are an inquiry. So, Shankara is actually talking about these practices. One is Pranayama, the other one is Pratyaharam. The next one is Nitya, Anitya, Viveka, Vicharam. The discrimination and separation of what is permanent and what is impermanent. The next word is japya. Japya comes from the word japa. Japa means doing japam, you know, repetition of a mantra is japa. Okay. Japya means that which is worthy of doing japa. Because the mind can, you know, revolve itself on thoughts, all sorts of thoughts. We will do japa. But japi means that which is worthy of be remembering. Uh, all, not everything should be remembered all the time. That which is worthy of remember being remembered is japi. So japi sameta means along with that. Sameta means uh, when some things come together, they will say sameta. You know? Uh, I think very commonly they would say Dampati Sameta. That means, uh, you know, uh, two people coming together, a couple coming together. So, coming with, okay, so Japya Sameta means along with Japa, along with the mantra which is worthy of being muttered. I use the word muttered because in English there may be no other um, word because that's commonly used. So, I have just borrowed. Or use the same word, Japya, Sameta, along with Samadhi. Samadhi, I use the word mental equipoise or mental equilibrium, equal mindedness, all this is Samadhi. Vidhanam. Vidhanam has many meanings, but I have used the meaning of prescribed mode. For example, you know, the word vidhanam comes in puja vidhanam, yajna vidhanam. Means, if puja vidhanam means puja vidhi, how a puja should be performed. The mode, a prescribed mode of performing something is vidhanam. Generally, puja vidhanam would say, so how do you do puja? You know, what do you do first, then what do you do second? You know, things like that. There's a listing of a procedure, you can say. A prescribed procedure, prescribed mode is Vidhana. So, Samadhi along with Japa and the proper prescribed mode. Okay, that is the fourth one Adhishankara is talking about. Kuru. Kuru means an instruction. Uh, Kuru means do it. I within the bracket I put pay because of the word which is coming after. In I don't know if there, this word kuru is something which everyone uses, but sometimes we don't know the, the where it happens, where it where we chant it. Sometimes people confuse the kuru with guru. One of the most popular shlokas where we chant it wrong is Vakratunda. Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam 
guru generally many people chant nirviknam guru guru and kuru are completely different kuru means do so in this case the like ganesha prarthana is nirvignam kuru means do nirvigna we are asking ganesha to remove the vigna vigna means obstacles nirvignam kuru means remove all the obstacles guru means heavy so if you say nirvignam guru means give us big difficulty you know this is a problem with not knowing how to chant not knowing the meaning um, so hereafter or when you chant nirvignam kuru don't ask for nirvignam guru you know so um, it's incorrect okay so here the word is kuru is a verb which is a instruction do okay perform is kuru avadhanam so basically avadhanam kuru avadhanam means attention concentrate in tamil we say avadhanam avadani kon then people will say in tamil in all south indian language all indian languages this word avadhanam is used that means you pay attention uh, to something kuru so avadhanam kuru means pay attention so that's the way the word i have used for the pay in english uh, you won't say do attention okay so that is why i put within bracket pay which basically means pay attention so archangel says pay attention to all these four pranayamam kuru okay pratyaharam kuru nitya nitya viveka vicharam kuru japya sameta samadhi vidhanam kuru so he is telling do all of this and then he is saying avadhanam kuru pay attention avadhanam kuru then he says mahat avadhanam mahat means great care take great care pay great attention to all these four so this is an instruction by adi shankaracharya and um, we will go into line by line with the way swami has discussed it in the discourse and see what uh, swami has said and how he has explained this lines okay so the first line pranayamam pratyahara pranayamam pratyahara Do all of you know that pranayama and pratyahara means in this ashtanga yoga patanjali has listed out the eight steps or eight limbs of yoga which is yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana and samadhi because these are the eight limbs of ashtanga yoga or ashtanga means eight limbs yoga uh, which has been taught by patanjali rishi patanjali and of course uh, he is the most prominent one there are many uh, um, yogis who have prescribed so swami uh, adi shankaracharya is talking about it and swami is explaining listening to a spiritual discourse recapitulating and digesting that discourse moving on good company and so on are the many different ways of serving the body this may be called the outer practices as against these there are only two which may be called the inner practices one is pranayama and the other is pratyahara Shankara gave the following verse in the Bhagavad Bhajo Govindam series in regard to these two practices. Pranayama is the sadhana or practice by which you hold the prana or the breath. The significance of pranayama may be understood when we recognize that there are five different vital airs namely 
ಪ್ರಾಣ ಅಪಾನ ವ್ಯಾನ ಉದಾನ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಮಾನ ದ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಬೈ ವಿಚ್ ದೀಸ್ ವೈಟಲ್ ಎರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ನರ್ ವಿಷನ್ In this pranayama, there are three different kinds which are referred to by the names Rechaka, exhaling, Puraka is inhaling, and Kumbhaka, holding breath. Rechaka and Puraka are related to the methods by which one is able to control the, over the various vital airs and take them in. To be able to hold them in the process is described as Kumbhaka. the second practice namely pratyahara consists in controlling the mind through the organs the organs and the mind always wish to look at and concern themselves with the external objects the mind develops sensuous desires by looking at such external objects as a result of these desires the mind becomes impure the process of pratyahara consists in turning the mind inwards and away from the external objects today several sadhakas not knowing what to do are approaching ignorant gurus for guidance and they are practicing either pranayama only or pratyahara only this is not correct pranayama and pratyahara go together in fact they are reflections of one another you will not get the benefit if you practice only pranayama or only pratyahara both have to be done together and each one depends on the other it is only when you control the mind that you can control the prana or the vital airs is only when you control the vital airs that you can control the mind it is not possible to do one without doing the other by doing both these things simultaneously you can turn the mind inward and control your prana that is how you can control the body which has life in it and you can experience a state of mind called samadhi so swami has nicely explained the importance of pranayama and pratyahara and how they are to be practiced together and how they help one attain a state of samadhi okay so we will look at the next slide the next line is nitya anitya viveka vichara nitya anitya viveka vichara in the second line of the words we see that an inquiry directed to finding out what is permanent and what is not permanent is essential when you make this inquiry you will come to the conclusion that atma is permanent and true whereas the human body is not permanent and is false if you go further and inquire into the nature of the atma you will find that it is being referred to by sacred names such as satyam truth shivam auspiciousness and sundaram beauty it is not possible to have prosperity without adhering to truth prosperity goes with truth similarly it is not possible to have bliss and happiness without prosperity happiness goes with prosperity truth is like a shining light it is with the help of this shining light that we are able to see nature around us the ability the ability to use shining light of truth to see and understand the nature around us stands for the bliss and happiness conveyed by the word sundar therefore 
the mixture or the conglomeration of Satyam, Shivam and Sundaram is Atma. After you have been able to understand the special aspects of these three things, there's nothing else for you to find out. Just as after the cooking is over, you have no more need for either the firewood or the hearth. So Swami is uh, nicely explaining to us what is Nitya and Anitya. One is Atma, the other one is Anatma. That, that Atma is permanent, Anatma is impermanent. And uh, Atma, Swami says, as Satyam and Shivam and Sundaram. Satyam is truth. Shivam, Swami here has used the word prosperity. Shiva means all auspiciousness is prosperity. It's not money. It is a mental wealth, wealth of joy, peace. All that is also wealth. Peace of mind. When the mind is calm, which happens when only when Atma is permanent and nothing else is permanent, we will have a state of uh, peace, which is actually for all the prosperity, all that is auspicious. And then everything in this world is beautiful. And that experience is Swami saying Atma. Uh, Swami has nicely explained what is the result of that. Nitya Nitya Viveka Vichara. The Auntie Saku, you raised your hand and you put it down. You have to unmute and speak, Auntie. This uh, Satyam Shivam Sundaram uh, with the Atma. Uh, can you explain much de in detail? Satyam is truth. Yes. But I want it to, in a simpler explanation, if you can. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, I will repeat what Swami has said. Swami says, took this. That which is permanent is truth. Nitya and Anitya, I will tell us Nitya, that which is Nitya is Sati, that which is always permanent, it does not change. That is truth, which is only God. So once we see God or the Atman as the permanent entity in this world, and that permanent entity will never uh, change, it will always exist, it will never be destroyed. It does not change when we understand that and we only stick to that Nitya and we don't stick, uh, attach ourselves to Anitya which is impermanent. We will always uh, be uh, prosperous in the sense there is nothing lacking. When we know that we have Atma, when we have God, uh, we will not seek that which is not going to be there. So once that happens, there is a sense of peace, which comes. What it does is what it gives is what's called prosperity consciousness. Prosperity consciousness means that we will, we will not think that we are missing something. We don't have something. And the Nitya Nitya Viveka Vicharam, when we know what is truth and that is always present and that is in us and that's around us, when we know that, we will never think that we are lacking something, we are missing something, we are poor, we don't have something, we will never have that quality. So that state is prosperous state, which is prosperity consciousness. So once that is there, there is peace. There is peace, we are not agitated by anything. Then once that agitation all stopped, then what's left is beauty. Everything you will enjoy, everything is blissful. Anandam, Sundaram, all that torment. Everything looks beautiful. Everything seems joyful. And that is the real state of Atma, Swami is saying. And that without that, we are not really experiencing God. So if we are experiencing God, we should always be happy. We should always be joyous. We should be blissful. And we should never feel that we are lacking something. We are only troubled that we don't have something. We lost something only when we are holding on to that which is impermanent. So this is my understanding. Thank you.
these are all steps needed to go to the samadhi state oh thank you or even liberation mukti you know everyone wants liberation and all that so it's without samadhi there's no liberation so we'll go to the next one japya sameta samadhi vidhana we'll see what swami is saying what is contained in the third line of the verse refers to the state of samadhi this line explains how we get to that state of samadhi this is attained by using both pranayama and pratyahara you will thus be able to give up all your desires and turn your mind inwards towards the atma when you do this you will find that the entire body takes a different turn the different kinds of energies will ca- all come under your control the samadhi should not be foolishly understood as blankness or darkness of the mind the state of mind which goes with japa has been described as the state of samadhi here the word japa does not mean holding a chain of beads and merely turning the beads on your fingers Japa means continual repetition of the name of the Lord. This repetition may or may not be loudly done. It should at least be done in your mind. This repetition of the name of the Lord in one's own mind is called Japa. If you pronounce the word Japa from the reverse side, it becomes Bhaja. whether it is japa that is uttering the name of the lord within your mind or it is bhaja that is uttering the name of the lord externally in a loud voice both of them can be called japa samadhi is being interpreted in many ways if one falls down unconscious or if one utters the name of the lord in a semi conscious condition or if one behaves in a confused and inconsistent manner we seem to think that he is in a state of samadhi to be unconscious or to be in a subconscious state or to be in a superconscious state is not being in samadhi you should understand i think that sorry that only when one is in his natural condition and yet can enjoy the bliss of samadhi then alone is he said to be in a state of real samadhi anything else will be referred to by different names such as hysteria fits weakness being tipsy and so on. these are never to be equated with samadhi unfortunately indians today are not able to recognize and distinguish true samadhi from these various diseases therefore they are not able to hand over to others the sacred meaning of samadhi words like pranayama pratyahara japa and tapa have all to be interpreted properly in that context one should understand what this sacred samadhi means the word sorry referring to various things have their meaning in fact the meaning attached to the word comes from the word itself so samadhi must itself indicate its true meaning sama means equal and adhi means buddhi or mind when you have developed equal mindedness you are in a true state of samadhi it's quite possible for you to develop this state even in ordinary life provided you understand what is meant by pranayama and pratyahara when the mind is turned inwards 
it looks only at the atma and does not look at the external surroundings therefore when your mind is turned inwards you will not notice the difference between pleasure and pain sorrow and happiness or heat and cold in fact the mind will not take note of any differences and disparities whatsoever it is the oneness of everything that you will be able to realize when an individual is in a state of samadhi he has nothing to do with the world although he is moving about in the world although the individual appears to be a part of the society he is not affected by the society the mind of such a person is always engrossed with what may be called atma drishti to illustrate such a situation one can mention several examples a worm which lives in mud is not affected by the mud at all women who paint their eyelashes black will not have the black paint touch the eyeballs the eyes are completely free although the eyelashes have the black paint on them we eat so many greasy things this greasiness may get on the onto the hand but it never remains on the tongue the tongue is untouched by greasiness so swami is talking about samadhi um you know the lot of misconceptions about samadhi you know where suddenly somebody will fall flat or you know become unconscious and people say oh, that person has gone into samadhi uh, somebody will close their eyes and sit in some meditative state then we will call it samadhi so swami is clearing all these myths an incorrect understanding of what is samadhi and they are all sometimes equated by you know some spiritual state of mind or being and so on swami wants us to clearly understand what real samadhi is which is being equal minded at all times unaffected by anything uh, not losing that peace of mind so that is samadhi yes santi sir Uh, going breathing could you explain little bit in a simple language because so many people are saying you have to go breathing so yes. my mind has to go breathing yes so i have been listening to so many satsang but i cannot understand they all say you go breathing and especially professor bajia has said it uh he felt as if his body is expanding and he's uh, engulfing the trees and the buildings and the walls everything within himself could you explain that anti that itself shows the person is not going within what that itself shows a person is not going within that's what i want to know that it's so that so swami has clearly said so the whole problem is swami is clearing many of these notions which people incorrectly experience and talk about it you may ask then why are these people talking people will talk see the one of the problems is uh, we spend time that itself is pratyahara pratyahara means not watching this or that then you will say oh you know it is coming in uh, uh, you know a channel where we expect swami's message is coming yeah he was closer to swami and he was telling tips for... you know i think we don't God. we don't need to no one can be externally close to god that is a myth mm -hmm. we have to know what is going within as you can see um, see this whole uh, and anyway, because we on the topic i will talk about it i think let's go to the next i think your question will be answered in the next no uh, problem at no see i think it is it is okay to listen to all kinds of people initially 
at some point we had to just go and study what Swami has taught, not what people claim to have experienced. However good such people's intentions may be, if they are misdirected, then everyone will close their eyes and they will forget Swami and they will think, oh, they are also expanding and this and that. You know, there are, there are different stages of uh, even meditation. Okay. I'm not saying that such experiences are not uh, part of the progress. Um, here Swami is talking about Samadhi. Um, there the focus is only one. So I think that will come in the next line where Swami is talking about Pur Avadhanam and Mahat Avadhanam, which Adi Shankaracharya. So it's, um, I think, well, let's read that and then we can come back to discuss it. Because we should understand what is preliminary stages of growth, even in meditation, and what is final stage of growth mm. in meditation and Samadhi. Mm. Um, because um, so I, I will, let's go to that and then we will talk about it. It actually answers your question you asked. Thank you. And I think the, the less we listen to others, the better in terms of what their experience is. See, one thing which we should, uh, maybe I will just focus here, you know, then we will say, okay, should we not listen to what others say? Nitya Anitya Viveka Vichara. When somebody is talking, we should know what is nityam which they are talking about, what is anityam they are talking about. And you take only the nityam and discard anything. In life, you know, we get a fruit, a banana. The peel has to be discarded, the fruit has to be eaten. You get a mango, the peel has to be removed and thrown away, the seed has to be discarded, eat the fruit. In this world, we will always, any spiritual talk also, we will get both coming mixed up together. We need to know what is Nityam and take it. Whatever is Anityam, just throw away. So discrimination has to be used in every aspect of life, including people's talk. I, am, I hope I am not discrediting anyone. No, no, no. But we, we have to ask proper seekers we should know what is permanent they are talking about, what is impermanent they are talking about. The impermanent may look very flowery, attractive and all that. It is better to discard. Uh, so I will stop it and, and then I will go to the next slide. Swami nicely explains the exact point. Kuru Avadhanam, Mahat Avadhanam. Kuru Avadhanam, Mahat Avadhanam. And I will, in fact, I will say even what I say also to discard. Read what Swami says. It's very, very important. Uh, no one should say, oh, Brother Aruno said, no, that's the wrong thing to say. So I just will warn everyone because why, there will be some anithyam coming from me also. You have to discard. Um, so let's uh, take the explanation of Swami. Let us take the case of a lotus. The lotus lives in water and depends on water for its existence. But the water does not affect the lotus. Like the lotus, like the tongue, like the worm in the mud, like the eyeball of women, the person in samadhi is not touched by the world around him. In order that you may understand this state of Samadhi, the last line of the verse says that you must develop what is known as Maha Avadhana, great concentration. Do not be in haste. Do not lose your patience. Do not have a wavering mind. Remember that you should have an unwavering mind. If you want to attain the state of Samadhi, you should be able to concentrate. Many seekers of truth and many people who are studying this aspect of Brahman often get doubts. 
they ask how Brahman and how created world, which are two separate things, can be treated as one. This is the question, sorry, I think I will, which they often ask. They doubt the identity of Brahman with nature. They doubt the identity of Brahman with nature. There's a small example for this. It is true that apparently Brahman and the world look separate. Take the case of a seed. When you put the seed in the earth, a plant comes out of it. This plant grows into a big tree and this tree gives out flowers, leaves, branches, fruit and so on. You see all these as different manifestations coming from a seed. It is only the illusory appearance of nature that makes us believe that they are diverse. But if you look at the branches, at these branches, flowers, leaves, fruits and the seed, from a spiritual angle, you will see that all these things are different manifestations of the same seed. They have all arisen because the mind pictures them to be so. In the same manner, Prakriti or nature, which is born out of Brahman and which you see around, must only be a manifestation of Brahman and nothing else. If one regards Prakriti as different from Brahman, it is only an illusion. In order to be able to recognize this, one must have the clarity of mind and the ability to perceive truth. In order to get an idea of this clarity of mind, we will consider what happened when Dronacharya called the Pandavas one by one and asked them to shoot a bird which he tied up as the object. When each of the Pandavas was about to take aim and hit the bird, Dronacharya used to ask some questions. Bhima was first asked what he saw. He said that he saw the bird, the robe which was used to tie the bird and the sky behind it. In this manner, all the Pandavas were called and all except Arjuna replied that they were able to see many things. Arjuna, however, replied that he saw nothing except the bird. This was the concentration with which he approached his object. If you have a desire to learn a particular thing, you must develop intense concentration toward that thing only. Unfortunately, today when we want to learn something, we concentrate on something else. This is the reason why we are not able to reach our destination and learn what we want to learn. For the second aspect also, namely the ability to perceive good qualities. There's a good example in Mahabharata. Krishna called Duryodhana with the intention of testing him. This took place not after the war, but before the war. Krishna told him what he wanted to do, that he wanted to do something important and that he was on the lookout for a good man with good attributes. He asked Duryodhana to look for such a man. Duryodhana searched the world over for a few days and said that there was no person with really good attributes and if there was anyone with good qualities, the best was himself, Duryodhana, and that he came nearest to the desired idea. Then Krishna sent Duryodhana away and asked Dharmaraja to come and he told Dharmaraja to look for a man who is very bad and whose qualities are such that there can be no one else worse than him. Dharmaraja searched the world over and came back and told Krishna that he could not find anyone with bad qualities. 
and if there was anyone with such bad qualities it was himself dharmaraja he said that he fits the best description of which krishna gave for duryodhana to say that he was the best man for dharmaraja to say that he was the worst man to man and for dharmaraja to say that he was the worst man the world is not responsible the qualities in them and the way they look at themselves are and others are responsible that is why we give so much importance to the ability to perceive the good and distinguish it from the bad no one can really determine what is good and what is bad the only alternative is for one to have faith in god and improve his own qualities so here swami is talking about avadhana mahat avadhana the great concentration and the best example swami is holding out is arjuna arjuna did not see anything other than the bird which he wanted to shoot even though there was a rope on which it was tied there was sky here behind it there was tree around it there were leaves all sorts of things he did not see anything he only saw the bird that is the level of concentration so in this world also we see so many things externally or when we close our eyes are we seeing the multiplicity or are we seeing the sing- singularity of god if we focus only on god and forget oh the god is expanding is covering the trees he is covering the buildings is covering other people then we are missing the point we are um, that's why it said when you go to a temple when you see the stone you will not see god when you see god you will not see the stone if you pay attention to the you know the different type of stone in which the statue is made we are not looking at god we are only paying attention to the stone but this temptation of looking at the creation on not not the creator is there very even outside as well as inside so when we say i think aunt saku has how to what it is to see within it is not only within us even when we look at external object we should go within that object and see god not the external appearance of a person or a thing it applies to us as well as it applies to things which we observe in this world also so going within is going within us when we look at ourselves that is discarding the body discarding the mind and remembering the atman and be aware of it when we look at the external world also discard the external appearance of the person external manifestation of their qualities and see within so going to the underlying principle in everything is going within uh, which is what nitya nitya when you look at external world so you should discard the anityam and go to the nitya when we look at ourselves also we will discard the external and go within to look at the nitya and japya sameda that we should continuously remember one na mantra and we should have the equal mindedness and we should have that perfect concentration and attention and anything else comes we should discard uh, so this is what is nicely explained by adi shankara acharya and swami here shankaraja shloka which swami has nicely explained and taught us so i think this will be encountered everywhere so it's 8:59 um if there are no other questions uh, we can close the session and meet again next week uh it's swami saira saira om समस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनोस्तलोकाखिनो